So here's the idea of the trace logic. Suppose I'm looking at the red, green, and yellow traffic light. And let's, let's suppose it's um, a dysfunctional, uh, sort of a messed up traffic light. So it, the probabilities are, aren't nice and clean. Red could stay red or it could go green or yellow and so forth. So I'm looking and you're looking, but you can only see red and yellow. I can see red, green, and yellow, but you can only see red and yellow. And suppose I'm going to take my matrix and add one thing to it. Every time I transition, my experience transitions from like, maybe red goes to green or red, maybe red goes back to red. I mean, it's a transition from red to itself. I'm going to increment a counter each time a transition happens. So I've got a counter and I'm seeing red, green, and yellow. And you and I are looking at the same light, but you only see red and yellow. You don't see the green. What's going to happen to your counter compared to my counter? Well, I'm going to be going a click every time red, green, or yellow appears. You're only going to click when red and yellow appear. So your clock is going to go slower than mine. It's that simple. It's just that simple. Your counter, if you only see red and yellow, will count fewer because you don't see the green. You only see red and yellow. I see the green, so I get a click for green, but you don't get a click. That's why your counter is going slower. Now, it's not just the case that your clock looks slower to me, but it's also the case that for you, my clock looks like it's going slower to you. By the way, I had this trace logic for probably more than a year. I was working on it, and I, for, first I, I discovered that it was a logic. So that was a new, apparently a, a new contribution to the theory of Markov chains. And I should say what, 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 what that contribution is and what, what it means by the trace. If I have the red, yellow, and green, just the red, yellow, and green, I can only see, the say, the red and yellow. Whatever probabilities were governing red, yellow, and green are now going to, they're going to control. I, now I just see red and yellow. So I'm going to get just a two by two matrix, right? Because red could go to red or red can go to yellow. Yellow can go to yellow. Yellow can go to red. So I'm going to get a two by two matrix of probabilities, but it will be controlled by the three by three. There's some three by three matrix that's controlling the red, yellow, and green that you see but it will uniquely determine what you should see on the two by two. That's the trace. The, the, the smaller matrix that's determined by the bigger one is called the trace of the bigger one. And it's unique in general. It, it, there's, so if I have a big make, Markov matrix on a, on a trillion states and I take a trace on 10, that, that new probabilities on just the 10 states will be completely determined by the trillion by trillion. But so what I discovered was, and I, um, I, I, I should say, I proposed this and then a mathematician friend of mine, Chetan Prakash, proved it. So, so when I say I discovered it, I needed a real mathematician to truly discover it. So Chetan and I discovered it together. We proved that it's a so-called partial order, or he proved it. He proved that it's a partial order. I proposed it's a partial order. And so that's what we mean by logic is, is that technically it's, it's a partial order. It gives you the notion of and and or and negation and implication and so forth. All the things that you would need for a logic, you know, like to say that um, if John is a bachelor, then John is a man, right? Yeah, that's entailed by that. If, you know, and, and things like that. If, if you could take conjunctions, disjunctions, and so forth, they're propositions. So it turns out we get an entire logic on the space of Markov chains. And so I call it the trace logic. And this is a new discovery. So we just discovered it in the last year. And I had it for a year and a half. And after, it was a year later, I was looking at this. It was just a few months ago, maybe six months ago. I was looking at it. And I noticed what I just had described to you that, oh, wow, at, at this stopping light, your, my one person's counter could be going slower than my counter, you, you know, because of this trace thing. I thought, could, Nah, could could Einstein's time dilations come out of that? Nah, that would that would be that would be too good to be true. So I should say summarize what we have and what we don't. What we have is a trace logic that's secure. It's a new contribution to the theory of Markov chains. That trace logic for n cycles gives us exactly the right contractions of length and time for Minkowski space. So space-time isn't the final reality. It's a trivial 0% of the new reality that's unfolding when we step outside of space-time and say, let's, what's our, our 
simplest, most drop-dead, stupid model of consciousness we can come up with. That's what I came up with, came up with the stupidest, drop-dead, simple model. You have experiences, and they change probabilistically. Okay, what can we do with that? Doesn't sound very promising, right? Going to get all of space-time physics out of that? Small chance. And that was my, until I discovered the trace logic. And then all of a sudden, in the last six months, I realized, holy smoke. It could be this simple. Hmm. It's really, what is the trace logic? It's saying how the experiences of different observers mesh. That's what it's about. It's all about observers and their experiences. There's an infinite class of observers, and we can talk about their time counters. And observers that see a sm smaller set of states than me, their time counter is going to go slower than mine and so forth. It's just been in the last few weeks that I've even known that these are the theorems we need to prove. So this is, this is brand new. Uh, this is the first time I've actually talked about this. And I didn't have the trace logic until a year and a half ago. And I didn't know what I had until six months ago. So, so I've been after this for, for 40 years. And just six months ago, I think I found the key that I've been looking for for, for 40 years. And by the way, the trace logic is not hard. It's, it must be there. It's I mean, amazing. A, a good sign that there's an inherent simplicity, I suppose, or beauty to something that is coherent throughout many different innovations and discoveries in the past. There is an inherent beauty to the simplicity of the discovery, which seems almost like too good to be true at first. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And what's, what's really interesting about the trace logic is there's no wiggle room. It's fixed. I can't play with it. It either worked or it didn't. So, so I knew. I, I was either going to get Einstein's theory or not. There was no way for me to fiddle this thing because the, 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 the trace logic can't be fiddled with. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, the trace is the trace, end of story. It's a, so it either did it or not. So I couldn't believe that it, that it works. All I'm trying to do right now is to show that the scope is bigger than space-time and the scope include space-time, that we can actually build space-time from the trace logic of consciousness. So I'm not saying that this is a final theory of everything. No, I will be very clear. This is 0% of reality. My theory is 0% of reality, but it's a bigger 0% than space-time. <laughs> and, and if I can show how space-time is a smaller 0% than my bigger 0% of reality, that's a step. Science will always and only know 0% of reality. Always and only. But we should do it.